Next, I would like to talk about the assessment of the patient with abdominal pain. And I think in this particular case, your ability to take a very good history and to do a very careful physical exam is terribly important. And when you're taking the history for the patient that is complaining about abdominal pain, there are three key questions that I want you to be sure and ask the patient. The qu first question, is the pain constant or colicky? And don't assume that people understand colicky. They might say, no, it's not colicky because that's what babies have. Define colic. Colic is where you have a spasm of pain that's fairly severe and then it goes away and then it comes back. A woman in active labor is having colicky pain. Colicky pain means that the intestines are working, the ureter perhaps is working. Uh, in the case of pregnancy, the uterus is working. It's functioning, but it's functioning against obstruction. So colicky pain could be as simple as constipation. It could be as serious as a bowel obstruction. In the case of the kidney and the ureter, it could be an obstructing ureter stone. So constant or colicky. Colicky pain can be very severe. Uh, I don't want to minimize that, but constant pain is much more serious than colicky pain. The second question you want to ask the patient is, do you have vomiting or nausea or anorexia? Any of those. Once again, don't assume that they know what anorexia means. Be sure you define words in the language that they can understand. But there is no significant, serious abdominal condition where there is not at least vomiting, nausea, or anorexia. Now, one of my professors always told me there are two words we don't use in medicine, always and never. But hardly ever are you going to find a patient with a significant intra-abdominal pathological process who does not have anorexia, nausea, or vomiting. The third question in female patients of reproductive age, be sure and ask about a menstrual history because any suspicion of a missed or late menstrual period, you must think about a ruptured ectopic pregnancy. That is a medical emergency and you certainly do not want to miss that. That's a key question to ask. Now let's move on to the physical exam and the first thing that you want to do, unlike the chest exam where for modesty reasons you may not want to have the patient totally undressed to examine their chest and their back, for the abdominal exam it is essential that you be able to see the abdomen. And before you touch the patient at all, you just want to look. You want to see if the patient is lying very still or you want to see if the patient is really writhing and moving. A patient that is writhing and complaining of horrible, terrible pain probably doesn't have anything terribly serious. Patients that have a really serious intra-abdominal problem like a bowel infarction, a dissecting aneurysm, a peritonitis, they're going to lie very, very still because moving hurts. The second thing is you want to look for scars. Now, uh, fortunately for the advancement of medical care, so much surgery now is done with laparoscopes and laparoscopic scars may be very hard to see. But for patients that had surgery 15, 20 years ago and have obvious surgical scars, that is important to notice because you, you know what might be gone uh, for example, a scar in the right lower quadrant might mean that the appendix is not there. But the other thing is that anyone who has had intra-abdominal surgery may have adhesions. And those adhesions can cause 
partial or complete bowel obstructions. And so if you have someone that has colicky pain and has surgical scars, you need to think about a partial or a complete bowel obstruction. Now, once you've looked at the abdomen, the next technique to do before you start palpating, hold off on palpating because once you start palpating, if you hurt the patient or even tickle the patient, you have lost some of your ability to do a careful exam. So you want to just examine with your stethoscope, get the room as quiet as you can, and take a full 30 seconds or a full minute, it will seem like forever, and listen carefully for bowel sounds. If you hear gurgling, rumbling sounds, bowel sounds, then right then and there you know you are not dealing with a really serious problem. On the other hand, if you listen very, very carefully and you don't hear anything at all, and not for 10 seconds, but like for a minute, then you have to think, I've got something serious going on here. If the patient seems to be tense and touchy or ticklish, it might be good with your stethoscope to gently palpate as you're listening around on the abdomen just to see if there's any place that's really tender, but very gently, very subtly. Now it's time to palpate, but instead of you palpating, ask the patient to palpate themselves. Encourage them to actually move around their abdomen, gently palpate, maybe even deep palpate, watch what they do, and see where it seems to hurt. This will give you a lot of information because the patient will generally palpate themselves more deeply than they will let you do it. And so you can get an idea of where the patient is tender. And you can ask the patient, where is it most tender? Uh, typically, epigastric tenderness, would you think gallbladder, stomach, uh, pancreatitis, lower abdominal pain below the umbilicus, you're thinking about colon, bladder, large intestine, appendicitis, and of course, always, always, always think about ectopic uh, pregnancy, ruptured ovarian cysts. Do not forget the gynecological diagnoses. Now finally, it's time for you to palpate, and I think it's a good idea. If you can, warm your hands, put your hand on the patient, and just let it rest there. Just let them get used to the fact that your hand is touching them. And then start on the place on the abdomen where they were least tender. Don't go directly to where they were most tender. Go as far from it as you can and palpate there. And that's where you want to test for rebound. That's where you want to push in and then let go and let the abdominal wall rebound and see if that hurts. Because if the patient winces, then almost certainly you've either got some abdominal wall pain like they were doing too many sit-ups or you've got peritonitis and that's serious. And then finally, the very last thing you do is you eventually get to where they were hurting the most and you confirm how tender they are there. For example, if you're palpating in the right lower quadrant and that's where they said they were most tender, See if they are just slightly tender or moderately tender or very, very tender. That will give you some evidence of, of how serious this diagnosis is. Finally, you will very often have a patient who is complaining about abdominal pain, but you have done this careful history and you have done this careful physical exam and you haven't really found anything that's terribly impressive except that they seem to be diffusely, vaguely tender all over their abdomen. A useful test, uh, assuming of course the patient is lying down, which they will be if you're doing this exam properly, 
is ask them simply to raise their legs. You can gently assist them to raise their straight legs and then ask them to hold it there. Now, for a lot of people who are not very athletic, this will be somewhat difficult. So if it's difficult, that doesn't tell you anything. But what you want to ask the patient is, does that hurt? And if it really hurts, then you're dealing with some pathology of the abdominal wall and, and not anything in the interior. This is very much like superficial chest pain versus deep chest pain. If you can assess that this is superficial abdominal pain, uh, not to minimize that it doesn't hurt, but you probably are not dealing with an emergency. Mm -hmm.